Coming up, we take a look at what it takes to be valedictorian, two band members entering drum corps, and baseball season ending. This is Hawk TV for Friday, May 22nd, 2015. Good morning, Heyman High School. I'm Spencer Rojas. And I'm Karen Rochinelli. When seniors graduate in two weeks, senior Young Jang will be named valedictorian for the class of 2015. Courtney Foster takes a look at how Young Jang became number one in a class of over 750 students. With a class of over 700 students, Young Jang has worked to become the first in his class. Jang has always been determined to be the best student he could be. After realizing the time required to be successful in his AP classes, Jang spent majority of his time studying. In sophomore year, I got my first rank and I was third. And I was like completely satisfied with that rank and I had like no problems. Like I didn't really like have a desire to go up any higher or any lower. I just wanted to keep my rank. Okay. A couple of transcripts later, I got second. And that's when I started thinking like, okay, like I'm working really hard and I'm so close to, you know, being first. And so I, I just pretty much like made a commitment to myself. I said, I'll work my hardest you know, possible, and if that gets me to, you know, valedictorian spot, that's great. If that gets me to salutatorian or whatever, like, that's great. Well, as at a school here at Hebron High School, the quality of education is very strong, and I would imagine that the student that becomes the valedictorian or the salutatorian probably puts in a lot of hours in the evening time studying um, material that they have that they had learned during the school day, uh, doing a lot of above and beyond in their classes more so than just what the class calls for. Since Jank has become top ranked in his senior class, there is a constant pressure to maintain his position. Although Jank is focused on academics, he wishes he would have taken extracurricular activities. The hardest part is like this, like you have this feeling of like, like weight, like it's kind of like pressure. It's just like, I could, I would be personally satisfied with getting like just an A, but you know that everyone else is competing like really, really hard and that if you just get an A, then you're not going to be able to stay in that specific spot. So you have this, like, you have to get close to perfection as possible in like every possible academic. And another thing that's really hard is like it kind of restricts the amount of classes that you can take. For example, like, for, I would have loved to take like a, like a home economics like cooking class because like I just was really interested in that stuff. But when it comes down to it, because our school has like specific multipliers, it's actually disadvantageous for you to take um, non-AP courses because that will make your like overall GPA worse and all that stuff. Um, so it's just kind of like, in that sense, it's very like stressful. Although Jang has many opportunities in his future, he struggles to find his passion and remains undecided about his major. For my future, I have no idea. Like, I've been asked that question a lot in, um, this year, like where are you going to college and what are you majoring and stuff like that. I guess my like, like standard answer is just study like science and do pre-med, but I, I kind of like know that's not really the thing I want to do. Because um, I don't really have like one thing that I'm really passionate about, so I'm still trying to find something that interests me. So definitely, when I you know attend college, I'm gonna take a variety of classes and try to see like where I where I belong, um, where I fit in, and what I'm really most interested in. Reporting for Hot TV, I'm Courtney Foster. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Courtney. Jang will address his classmates at the commencement ceremony on June 6 at the UNT Coliseum. This year, choir is performing its spring show with the theme Decades. It will compile different styles of clothing and dancing to represent each time period. All, we're all working very hard, like all the choirs. We're all going to be dancing, we're all going to be singing, we're all going to be showing uh, the different types of things that went on during the decades, and we're just going to be like portraying what was famous and what everyone liked during those time periods.
Last year, choir asked theater director Dusty Thompson to choreograph the show. But this year, the show consists of more student-created choreography. This year, we've had students choreograph everything, and it's really cool to see what they come up with, and they've come up with some really neat things. I love the, the creativity, and I also love that, you know, they get to kind of climb out of the box of the UIL music and do something totally different. It's a lot of fun. The spring show will be held May 30th. Tickets can be bought 45 minutes before the show for $5. We'll be right back. We have chickens in my fourth grade class, and there was one that was born in like a defective. It's like, so we couldn't walk it while they have legs out. Welcome back. Each year, over 8,000 students audition for less than 3,500 positions in the top tier drum corps. Those who get accepted into the program will get a chance to tour the nation during the summer. Sophia Kraft takes a look at two of the seven students from marching band who will leave their friends and family behind to pursue this opportunity. For many years, senior Adam Bornan and junior Chris Quevedo have dedicated their time to band. As members of marching band, both Bornan and Quevedo have performed at numerous pep rallies and games. However, after making Drum Corps International, they will travel across the country to compete against different drum corps, performing in front of audiences of around 400,000. Drum Corps is basically marching band major league. Um, it's it's the same level as high school football to NFL. It's the same distance away. While Quevedo doesn't have any prior experience with drum corps, Bernan is beginning his third year. Both have different reasons for joining this program. It looked cool and also to get a better career and already doing like just audition camps has made me miles better than I would have been if I hadn't done any audition. I personally wanted to join because my sister did it um, and I saw it and it was just really cool to me and it was just something I thought very passionate about. You have to, you have to be committed to be working very hard for a very, very long time. Due to the majority of drum corps members being college students, rehearsals typically begin in mid-May. Depending on the drum corps, students in high school like Quevedo and Bernan will likely leave school three weeks early to attend in practices. Your answer. We're going to be in Denton and then we have to fly out to California and we're just going to be rehearsing there before competitive shows even start. I'm going to go there and I have to do a bunch of seat time and then I have to come back. Uh, like at the very end of the year and uh, take my finals and, um, and then I leave. So I have to miss some drum corps actually. 65% of students in drum corps intend to major in music education. Quevedo and Bernan hope that this experience will benefit them in the future. Well right now already the techs at our drum corps have like talked to me about where I wanted to go a little bit um, from here on out to like my next drum corps if I want to advance at all and I think having them talk to me about that will maybe grant me connections to other cores to maybe audition for better groups. I think it will be the thing that gets me a career. I think the connections I'm making through these years and just the, the drumming world and the music world in general is just I've been able to meet so many people who are able to get me places that I want to go and you know these connections are gonna make or break my life as a career. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Sophia Kraft. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Sophia. The annual Drum Corps International Tour is made up of over 100 events throughout North America. The tour will begin June 17th and then August 8th in Indianapolis for finals. We'll be right back with sports.
Welcome back. After defeating Byron Nelson in the by district round of playoffs, the baseball team played South Lake Carroll in the area round. Now to tell you a lot with sports. Thanks, Spencer. The baseball team wrapped up its season Saturday afternoon in the area round of playoffs. Reese Woodhill brings us a closer look at the season ending loss. The baseball team lost the first game of the series 2-1. The team rallied back Friday night to win 8-7, to eventually losing the series Saturday afternoon 15-2. to You know, game one, we'd have loved to get a hit here or there and, and, and uh, uh, come out with a win, but, you know, uh, just like all season. I, I told these guys nothing's necessarily gone perfect for us all season. We've had injuries, we've had things happen, you know, some bad breaks, but we always have overcome, we've always uh, fought through it, and that's the kind of kids we've got. Throughout the weekend, the team committed five errors, allowing Southlake to score several runs. Errors, errors, uh, they put a hurt to you, man. I mean, they, they bring down momentum. They... It just is, it's like a buzz killer. With seven seniors on the team this year, the team looks to build up younger players as they get ready for next season. Uh, we got we have, we've got some strong juniors, a lot of strong juniors, and we got a sophomore and a, a freshman. And we'll be ready to roll next year and get past this point. The team finished the season with a 21 and 10 record and ranked 13th in the state. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Reese Woodhill. Now back to the press box. As sports this year comes to a close, the football team is getting ready for next year's season. As several seniors graduate, the team is looking for new players to step up in leadership positions. We had a lot of juniors on the team that played big roles, so the juniors are going to have to step up and replace those guys that are we're losing, unfortunately. But I feel like the juniors are ready to come in. We also got a few freshmen that are pretty good, sophomores that are ready to help. Every year you're going to always have turnover with uh, losing seniors, especially at the high school level and uh, you know even college level has to do that sometimes. But uh, you know you just get ready with a new group of guys, you uh, look at the guys that you have, things you think will be your strengths and uh, maybe some areas you think will be your weaknesses and try to work around those things and put yourself in position to uh, you know, give your kids the best chance to have success. During the offseason, Hebron hired a new offensive coordinator. Coach Michael Odell previously coached at Marcus, Capel, and Barbers Hill High School. Odell also won a 5A state championship as the starting quarterback at Louisville High School in 1996. And coach Odell is a good coach. He's, he brought over a lot of new players. We're going to put the ball in the air a lot more and be a lot more tricky, a lot more trick plays around with the defense. And we're going to gain some yards, throw some yards. We've got a new mobile quarterback to where he can move around in the pocket and make some throws for us. He's bringing a lot to the table. Um, one of the things that Coach Odell's bringing to the table is, uh, you know, obviously he's had experience uh, with the run game as well as the pass game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can be a little more effective throwing the ball than what we were last year. And again, we had a lot of injuries and some things like that. And relied heavily on our run game with Angelo Garbutt and Zach Rogers and some of those guys turned away up until Zach got hurt. But, uh, you know, but again, it was, uh, you know, just trying to do some things to where we have a few more options and a few more things to do. We do feel like we got some good athletes uh, out on the perimeter and some things we can do. Uh, and I just put so much pressure on our running back to have to try to carry the load so much. After its first losing season in five years, going 2-8, and eight, the Hawks are working to get back to its winning ways. Oh, it's going to be a big turnaround this year. Uh, new offensive coordinator, uh, defensive guys, you know, everyone's just more hungry than we were last year. Whole new mentality towards the team. Every year, the football team hosts a spring scrimmage to get people ready for the upcoming season. Uh, spring games just kind of a it's kind of a carnival atmosphere a little bit, you know. We'll we'll divide the teams up a little bit, let the coaches have some fun drafting players and doing some things with that. It'll be a good time. Also, uh, you know, have all the festivities with the food trucks and the camps and the clinics and all the different little things going on out here. So. Like I said, it's kind of turned into a big fun night, more of a carnival labs for anything else. The annual spring game and festival will be held on May 28th. That's it for sports. I'm Tyana Lott. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Tyana. That's it for today's broadcast. I'm Karen Oshinali. And I'm Spencer Rojas. Have a great rest of your day.